Hey everybody, Marcos Villegas here, post-fight for Rongvinsai versus Gonzalez 2, where I'm being joined with the head promoter of this event, Mr. Tom Loeffler of K2 Promotions. And Tom, wow, I was not expecting that to happen, right? Wow, what a shocker. Uh, I really thought uh, Chocotito was going to come back. You know, you saw all the fans that were here. But, uh, boy, you can't, uh, you can't deny Rungvisai. He took advantage of the first opportunity in Madison Square Garden. He won a very close, controversial decision. WBC ordered the rematch, and he put an exclamation point on it. He, the way he was able to, to stop Chocotito, it just, uh, his punching power is tremendous. And you saw Inoue. Inoue lived up to all the expectations. Everything you hear about Inoue is, uh, he, he, boy, he was, uh, he was the consummate boxer, puncher, professional, the way he stalked a world-class fighter like Nieves, and then the way uh, Estrada won against uh, Quadras. I mean, this just leads. The WBC's ordered uh, Rungvisai now has to fight Quad uh, Estrada. So that's, that's going to be a great matchup, uh, Rungvisai and Estrada. In terms of the main event, what do you think made the difference this time around for Rungvinsai to get that knockout? I like to think that his size made a big difference in the fight. Choco's been struggling at that weight, but what do you make? Well, at the, at the weigh-in, I looked at both guys, and it looked like uh, Chocotita was bigger than uh, Rungvisai. But uh, tonight in the ring, it just uh, Rungvisai was so much bigger, and you could see his punches were hard. I actually thought R Roman was doing very well, was boxing him. I figured his game plan was to, to take him in the later rounds when you saw like the first fight where he was able to dominate in the later rounds. But uh, when he started trading with Rungvisai, he just... Uh, it just uh, doesn't have that power to keep up and, and, and trade with Rungvisai. There's a lot of question marks now about where does Choco go from here? Does he stay in this weight class? Does he try to move Mac down? I know he was struggling in that other weight class to, to make the weight. It's kind of like in a weird spot now. Yeah, and it's only three pounds, but you see it made a big difference from between 112 and 115. You know, I'll, I'll talk to Mr. Honda and Tyken, his promoter, and Carlos Blondon, his manager, and see you know, see what they want to do. I mean, uh, only two fights ago, he was considered universally the number one pound for pound fighter. So it could be just one of those matchups where Rungvisai has a bad style for him. Southpaw style, big puncher, very big guy, big even for 115 pounds. So, um, you know, it could be one of those things where Roman could beat everybody else except when he runs in against uh, Rungvisai. It, it, uh, it's a tough matchup for him. So we have to see what what Roman wants to do, what Mr. Honda and Carlos would like to do, and then uh, and then go from there. In terms of the co-main event, like you mentioned earlier, Naoya Inoue made a uh, very good debut. I, I felt for Nieves. I, I felt every time a punch would land, you could see like organs moving. It was the weirdest thing. It was tough. I, I, I was feeling the body punches. They were so hard, man. I was, I was wincing. I was wincing. That was everybody on press row. Every, every time he would land a punch, everyone was like, Jesus. Yeah. And then he has showed a lot of heart. He, look, he had a tremendous opportunity tonight to fight for a world title, fight on HBO. And uh, he, he really tried to make the best out of it. It's just when you run into a guy like uh, Inoue, it, uh, there's only so much you can do. And, and Inoue, there's a reason why they call him the monster. And he, he really lived up to his nickname tonight. He had a great amount of Japanese fans here. Uh, but he, they bought a ton of uh, floor tickets uh, for the fight, so he's got he's establishing a big a following. Uh, it's his first fight in America. You got to put Inoue in the top ten, so towards the top ten. I mean, his dominant performance against uh, uh, a world-class fighter like uh, Antonio Nieves, it just uh, it was very impressive. It gets me thinking that we could potentially see after the Estrada fight him go up against Rungvinsai. Oh, absolutely. Uh, well, there's no guarantee Rungvisai uh, beats Estrada. Estrada had a very impressive performance in Quadras. That was a true Mexican-style fight. That was nonstop action. The guys were going at it 100%, and, and that was a great way to kick off the Superfly show was by that, that kind of matchup, a 12-round 12 12 uh, war where uh, Estrada won by one point. So you got to give him a lot of credit, but uh, Estrada showed some great uh, boxing skills. And uh, that's going to be a great matchup against uh, Estrada. And then in a way, you know, against the winner of that, it could be, uh, I mean, the super flyweight division is red hot right now. Were you, like, scratching your head going, like, uh-oh, when they, like, switched the scorecards and they announced first Quadras had won? Like, were you like, ah? Uh. Yeah, I thought, you know, it was very close. It was. It, it was very close. But with the knockdown, I figured, I, I figured, I wasn't keeping score at ringside, but I figured that, 
with a knockdown and Estrada had won or done it enough to win. And then when they announced the uh, quadras, I'm like, yeah, that didn't seem right. But then uh, Michael Buffer quickly changed it, and then everyone was everyone calmed down at uh, <laughs> in the arena. We had a great great crowd crowd tonight. It was completely sold out. Every seat went clean and. Uh, you know, when you have a great weather like this under the Southern California skies, this is, you can't beat uh, this type of venue for boxing. So you think more flyweights under the K2 banner here at StubHub or at the Forum in the future? Well, you know, the, the flyweights were under six different uh, promotional banners. It just we, we were able to put the event together with the help of HBO and uh, with the cooperation of all six uh, promoters. I will have to say that the flyweights, the promoters of the flyweights are much more willing to get in the ring to put their guys in tough fights than fighters in, in other uh, glamour divisions. So uh, we, we have a lot of respect for the small guys and, and uh, the, the small guys sometimes put on the biggest shows. Now we're uh, leading into the biggest one uh, next Saturday. I know uh, we're all anxious for it. Tom, thank you so much. It's really great seeing you. Was, really appreciate it. This is a great card, right? This was a great prelude for the best fight of the year between uh, Canelo and Triple G. Uh, that's, that's what the fans are looking forward to. Next weekend, September 16th. Don't miss the fans.